Good afternoon, everyone. We are set to get started. Thank you all for joining us. Now, before we get start started, I'd like to ask everyone to please make sure you are set to mute and that your video is shut off. Mayor Jimenez today will be sharing a document during his comments and we wanna make sure everyone can see it. We have a few guests with us today that can also answer questions. Welcome to Deputy Mayor Maurice Kemp, who among many other things can answer questions about our testing site. Also joining us is Deputy Mayor Jennifer Moon, our resident expert on all things emergency ordered, as well as on hospital data collected by Miami-Dade County. And with us today, the distinguished panel of medical experts who have been instrumental to Mayor Jimenez during the COVID-19 pandemic. They are from the University of Miami Health System, Dr. Lillian Abo, infectious diseases specialist, Dr. Tamira Ferreira, chief medical officer, inpatient and acute care services. From Florida International University, Herbert Wertheim's College of Medicine, Dr. Eileen Marty, infectious diseases specialist, from the Florida Department of Health in Miami-Dade County, Dr. Yesenia Villalta, Executive Community Health Nursing Director, and President and CEO of Jackson Health System, Mr. Carlos Nagoya. Also joining us uh, that I just heard was on the line is the Assistant Director of the Miami-Dade Police Department, Thomas Hamlin, who can answer questions about enforcement. Once again, a reminder to everyone, please shut off your devices with audio, mute the devices and turn off your cameras while the mayor is speaking. We can all turn them back on once we get to the question and answer portion of our press conference. And with that, I say good afternoon to Miami-Dade County Mayor Carlos A. Jimenez. Take it away, sir. Thank you, Patty. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, uh, for being here. Um, oh, I'm having difficulty. Oh, here we go. Okay. Good afternoon. And um, as you know, since last week, we have been experiencing an increase in uh, positive COVID-19 tests and an uptick in hospitalizations. We're drilling into the numbers and have a number of strategies that we're focused on to tamp down the spread and to get tough on those who are not following the new normal guidelines and the new normal rules. Let me share a graphic with you that shows the spike in positives among 18 to 34-year-olds. Uh, watch the top line. That top gray line that uh, you just saw uh, tracks the 18 to 34 year old group from March 1st through June 13th. By the end of March, that group had around 500 positive cases in our county. Then the numbers started to go down. By May 18th, the positives were a bit over 200 cases. But after May 18th, the positives had grown almost fivefold to over 1,000 on June 13th. Now, this group is likely the safest as far as getting ill from COVID-19. They're thinking they're invincible because they will likely be asymptomatic. In fact, they're at high risk if they are overweight or they have certain medical conditions like diabetes or lung problems. At Jackson, over the past week, <coughs> excuse me, they have seen about one-third of the patients admitted were 18 to 34-year-olds. About half of those younger patients had a high body mass index, which indicates that they're overweight. Because those who have no symptoms are still potentially spreading the virus to anyone they come in contact with, including parents and grandparents. And remember, our goal all along has been to protect the most vulnerable people uh, over the age of 60 who can get severely ill from the virus. We don't want hospitals to be overrun, and that's why we've been so careful about protecting the elderly and continuing our safer at home order. We also want to protect our healthcare workers who are the heroes of combating the virus. They have been at it for more than three months, and they have made huge sacrifices, often staying away from their own families to continue to save patients. So today, I'm asking uh, parents and grandparents to be very careful and not get close to your kids or grandkids. Obviously, there's no county order that will make people do this. It's just common sense, and it's really a matter of life and death. Now, there's another trend that we're also addressing, and that's hotspots, where the virus is spreading faster than in other areas of the county. They're mostly in the Brownsville area, Little Havana and Alapata neighborhoods in the city of Miami and also in South Dade around Cutler Bay and the Homestead area. We're forming a surge ambassador team, which stands for Strategic Urban Response to Guideline Enforcement. The surge team will be going into neighborhoods and speaking to residents and businesses about the importance of wearing masks inside businesses, 
and also outside when it's not possible to practice social distancing of at least six feet from others. I've directed Deputy Mayor Jennifer Moon to put together a team of 100 people who will be knocking on doors to provide information to residents. We're also preparing kits to hand out with masks and hand sanitizers. I've assigned Deputy Mayor Kemp to continue to work with the state and other partners to open up more testing sites and have more mobile testing. I met with the State Department of Health and our medical experts yesterday to strategize about hard hit areas, and many of the doctors are with me here today. We know that in the Homestead area, there are farm workers who are testing positive, and some of them live in very small homes with many people packed in. It's difficult for them to be to self-isolate in such close quarters, so we're going to try to help them and others throughout our county to stop the spread. Florida Department of Health will be alerting the county to those residents who are in dire situations, but not so sick that they need to stay in the hospital. For those who need to isolate, the county will be providing a limited number of hotel rooms until they test negative for the virus. The eligibility criteria will be handled by the health department and everything will remain confidential to protect people's privacy. The county will supply the rooms for those who are eligible, but we will have no other details. Now, before wrapping up, I wanna talk a little bit about the uptick in hospitalizations. We still have plenty of acute care and ICU beds, but there are some hospitals that have transferred their patients to other hospitals in their healthcare systems. Baptist Hospital, for instance, transferred some of its COVID patients from its home, Homestead facility earlier this week to other Baptist hospitals. And that's not unusual for all of our hospitals in the county. Remember, many other medical procedures are not being done at all hospitals, so you always want a good balance of available beds. The capacity overall in Miami-Dade County is very good and pretty stable. The number of COVID patients in our hospital is still considerably less than what we saw during the height of the pandemic. We also have a temporary hospital built by the Army Corps of Engineers at the Miami Beach Convention Center for any overflow. And the old Pan American Hospital will also be available for nursing home patients who need to isolate but are not severely ill. Now, I want to ask a favor of those who have recovered from COVID-19. Please donate your plasma. It's one of the uh, potential life-saving interventions that hospitals use early on with moderate to severely ill patients. We're finding a lot of success in this type of intervention, so please help. To donate, go online to oneblood.org and you can sign up. The next two weeks are very important because we wanna make sure we keep tamping down the COVID curve. So you'll be seeing a lot more messaging on donated billboards throughout the county, reminding people to wear masks and practice social distancing and to stay home if they're sick. Miami-Dade County Police will continue to be out in force Make sure the rules are followed. Businesses that aren't following the rules will get shut down until they can show that they have met the new normal guidelines. Enforcement is key. And Miami-Dade Police and the municipal uh, police departments are amping up. Our goal is to be able to continue to open our economy, but only under the right conditions. So we're on pause right now until we see improvement. And I want to once again encourage our seniors to stay safer at home. Now I'll take your questions in English and our medical experts and two of my deputy mayors, Maurice Kemp, who is coordinating testing sites, Jennifer Moon, who's overseeing the new normal guidelines are also available to answer your questions. And then I'll say a few words in Spanish and answer those questions. Patty, uh, who do we have? Thank you, sir. We'll start off today with CBS4. Mike Cuno is the reporter. Mike. Mike. Okay. Uh, let me see if Christina Vasquez from Local 10 is on. I know she was getting set up for a live yep. shot. It's Hi. You hey. have me for like a minute 30. Hi, okay. Mayor. Um, real quick question for you. If you can go a little bit into a little more detail about your surge teams, and we're also curious to see if you've had any discussions with uh, Miami International Airport. Right now, they're still screening from the tri-state area. We were curious your thoughts if they should also now be screening from other states that are seeing surges like ours to include Texas, Arizona. Uh, the those, those uh, the answer to the question is that that is uh, um, a responsibility and also the purview of the Florida Department of Health and also the uh, 
the federal government. And so uh, uh, folks coming from the tri-state area are screened when they get to Miami International Airport. They're also advised that they need to self-quarantine. And so it's a discussion I need to have with the self-quarantine uh, for 14 days. That's the governor's order. That's still in effect. So um, I need to talk to the governor and see if he has any, any um, other um, ways that maybe he can do the same thing for other states that are experiencing a surge. Um, and then I, I'll get back to you uh, about his response. But that is a Florida, a Florida Department of Health issue or Florida Department of Health uh, purview and along with the federal government. But is there any way you can expand a little bit more on those surge teams in the hotspot areas? Sure. The, the surge teams are, are going to be uh, folks that are going to go into those areas to look at businesses and also into knock on doors and give information about, hey, there is a spike of COVID-19 in your area. These are the things you need to do to protect yourself. And we'll be having uh, handing out kits to uh, in those areas for people that need them, masks. Hopefully we're going to have hand sanitizers, other things to keep them safe. And the message also will be for those elderly to uh, if you are living uh, with younger folks, uh, even though they're part of your household, it'd be a good idea to kind of stay away from them uh, for, for a while, especially if, uh, if those younger folks are, are actually you know, doing something, going to work, et cetera. We have seen a surge in younger people, as you saw in the graph. That's a huge spike in, in younger folks. And, um, and we also need to, to drive home the message to our uh, younger residents that, hey, it's your responsibility to, to, to keep safe. You know, yeah, you may want to go to a party. You may want to, you know, hang out with your friends, et cetera. But uh, as you've seen, a number of you are positive. And so you have to assume that everybody is positive, especially if you live with your parents or you're, or you're close to your parents or your grandparents. In order to keep them safe, you have to keep yourself safe. And so that's also a, a message that we're going to be putting out with those surge teams. And so we see this the surges or the, the spikes actually in three different uh, zip codes. Uh, I think it's 33142, 33125, and 33030 down in South Dade. Uh, and so we'll make concerted effort in those particular hotspots to get the word out. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Let's move on now to the Miami Herald, Doug Hanks. Thanks so much. So, Mayor, the surge teams will not be interacting with people who uh, contracted COVID, but will just be in the neighborhood, kind of trying to spread the word. Yes, because uh, the uh, there is an unusual number, a high number of positives coming from those neighborhoods, and uh, and so we'll try to also get the information from the Department of Health, kind of zero in where in that zip code. Are we really having the problems? And so the zip codes are pretty big, big areas. And so right now it's divided into zip codes, but we can also get information that kind of zeroes in exactly where that is and start working in those areas to educate the people in those areas that, hey, you have a high incidence of, of uh, COVID-19 in your area. You need to watch out. Tell the elderly there, hey, you need to be extra careful because there's a lot of COVID-19, a high number of COVID-19 patients in this area. And a lot of them happen to be young. And a lot of those are not going to have any symptoms, but they're going to be spreading the virus. So you need to be careful too. So not only is it the responsibility of the, the young folks that are, 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 you know, we're seeing this rise in the, in the COVID-19 cases, but it's also the responsibility of folks like me. Like I'm 66 years old. I got to take care of myself. I got to be extra careful that, um, you know, whenever I'm around um, any family members that I keep my distance, wear my mask, and um, and uh, practice social distancing. Don't touch, you know, uh, my kids, my grandchildren. The same thing. And, and any family member that uh, doesn't live with you, or even if they do live with you, but they go outside, you need to start distancing yourself from them for a while until we start to tamp down the the, uh, the infection right here in Miami. Can I just follow up regarding the hot spots? Are you getting any insight from the contact tracing reports from the state as to where the problems are and sort of where they're coming from? We're get, well, we obviously have the information that we know that the positives are in a certain area. We also are, con, are in contact with the state and the Department of Health is actually uh, zooming in on certain what they consider to be uh, problem areas. And so they're actually doing a lot of testing in what through their contact tracing, they know, hey, there's a hotspot there. Let's go over there and start testing. 
I think that's that's one of the reasons why you're seeing this this spike in the positive rate, which is a good thing because they're identifying those places and then going in and um, and identifying those that uh, that have the disease. But uh, if that also you know uh, basically shines a light on these certain areas, we need to go behind them and we need to start educating the people around that area that there is a high incidence of COVID-19 here. These are the things you have to do. Again, re-educate them the things you have to do. And if you don't have some of the supplies that you need, we're going to start issuing some of those supplies, the hand sanitizers, et cetera, masks to uh, keep you as safe as possible. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Sir, I have a question uh, from someone who's not on the line, but is watching Catherine Kalurgis, uh, the deputy web editor with The Real Deal, Real Estate News. Uh, she wants to know if someone can share more details on the county providing hotel rooms for people who need to self-isolate. Sure, I can have Jennifer Moon answer that question. Uh, and so it, we're going to be working with the Department of Health. I mean, I think it was in my comments. And uh, the hospitals will be referring those folks to the Department of Health who will then have a screening process. And then those folks that are eligible will be referred to Miami-Dade County who will then provide a limited number of hotel rooms so that they don't go back into crowded spaces uh, being positive or possible, po high, high probability of being positive. So they don't go back into a crowded space and basically give it to uh, the folks they're living with. So Jennifer, any, any other information on that? We're going to be working with the hospitals and the and the Florida Department of Health so we can identify people who have no other way of being able to isolate. We want to be able to really tamp down the spread of the um, disease and especially people who are have are have been tested, have symptoms, but we don't know whether or not they're positive yet. They don't have to be in the hospital, but they really should be self isolating. And that's the population that we want to make sure can be safe and protect their families. Thank you so much. Now we have a question from Philippe Enol Bouteau with the Haitian Times. Philippe? If okay. We can hear you, yes. I believe your audio is not is not good. We can't understand what you're saying. At least I can on my own. Mayor, do you turn Okay. I'll, I'll see if he can send me this question and, uh, and I'll ask it for him. Okay, I know we also had another Local 10 reporter here, Leanne Morejon. Are you there? I'm here. Good afternoon. Um, I had a couple questions. Uh, I wanted to follow up about the surge teams and find out who exactly is making up these surge teams. Are these uh, health department employees? Are these parks of the employees? Are they going to be new hires? Who's going to be comprising this team of 100 people uh, to make up the surge team? Jen, can you, uh, Jen, can you answer that question? Sure. We, we already have in place um, a Goodwill Ambassadors program with the county that we'll be accessing. These are county employees who want to take the go the extra mile and do things for their community. So we'll be accessing the um, Goodwill Ambassador program, but, but su um, supplementing those folks with the same folks that have been helping out at the parks and the beaches. Um, they are people that we can bring on that um, may have been event staff or other, you know, had other positions that are not really available right now. They can come help us. Um, they can work with the community and make sure that we get the information out to everybody that's that needs it. Okay. Um, I also had another question, if I may. Um, this is regarding Miami International Airport. I know that at some point uh, passengers were being screened specifically from the tri-state area so in uh, New York and, and the surrounding area, now that cases have surged in other spots and that area has, you know, they're basically quarantining Floridians, Arizona, you know, residents of Arizona, Texas, et cetera. Basically the states where we're seeing more cases now, is there any uh, plan to change who is being screened at Miami International Airport? And I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm just understanding that you may have addressed this already. So, yes, we did, and that's, uh, that's the purview of the Florida Department of Health and also the, the federal government. 
at the airports. They screen everybody coming from the tri-state area. I would anticipate that they will expand that uh, if they think it's necessary. Also, talking, I will talk to the governor and does he feel it's necessary to also uh, have those folks coming from those states that are experiencing a surge do a self-isolation for 14 days. That's the order right now for anybody coming from the tri-state area. Not only are they screened at Miami International Airport, uh, the order from the governor is that they have to self-isolate for 14 days once they get here. My, so, apologies. Uh, my apologies for being redundant there. My last no, question, no if I may, is um, are you considering, since we're trying to tamp down on this, uh, you know, this increase, the increases that we're seeing, I mean, are you, are you planning or even considering fines for people who aren't obeying mask rules in public places, such as uh, in parks, you know, if someone's walking their dog and they're not wearing their mask, I mean, are we considering fining people? Um, is that something that's on the table for you? And if so, who, you know, who's going to be responsible for, you know, uh, we're, we're that? actually looking at, yeah, right now there are criminal uh, offenses that if you um, technically, if you're walking, if you're within six feet of somebody and you're not wearing a mask, you're actually in violation of an order and it's a second degree misdemeanor. You can be fined up to $5,500 and then spend 180 days in jail, technically, okay? Uh, I'm not saying we're doing that, but you can technically do that. We're looking at a way to make this actually a civil citation, a civil citation and a criminal citation, so that you can be fined civilly by uh, a number of inspectors from our, uh, like building inspectors and fire inspectors that are gonna help us with these uh, uh, enforcing these rules. Uh, at a much lower level, but yeah, you can technically be fined for violating one of our one of our orders, and the and the violation could be as high as a second degree misdemeanor. So yes, is it on the table? Yes, it's on the table. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Now for CBS Four, we have uh, one of their assignment editors on the on the line. She's going to be uh, asking the question for the reporter who I think is doing a live shot. Abby, are you there? Mm -hmm. CBS4, Abby, Lewis. All right, we'll move on then. We'll come hey, back uh, here I am. Here I am. Oh, okay. I was on mute. Sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, thank you so much, Mayor Jimenez. Abby Lawing with CBS4. Um, it was brought to our attention that Chapman South Head Start was reopened either late last week, I believe, last week. And um, then there was a COVID-19 case that uh, an employee had there. And now it's been shut down. Can you confirm that? And then you can, can you tell us why it was reopened? Because it was told to us that it was recommended it was not to reopen. I, I actually don't have any information on that. I'll ask one of my deputy mayors if they have any information on that. Jennifer, uh, Maurice, do you have any information on that? Yes, I do. This is uh, Deputy Mayor Maurice Kemp. And uh, the early childhood center is closed. And it won't open again until mid June. So we're never closed by any order of the bear or any other order. Um, it's, it's slated to be open for the summer, but that's the decision that the mayor will have to make. So okay, thank you. And closed? is it because, um, I'm sorry, my phone broke up a little bit. Is it because some, did it close because someone did get COVID-19 an employee there? Is that correct? No, that is not my understanding. My understanding it was, is not supposed to open until July. Um, we're cleaning the facility and getting it ready to open if the mayor makes that decision. Okay, that, so there's no was it ever, COVID. Was it ever open? Okay, thank you so much. Was it ever open? It wasn't open for, for the summer. It, there's a, a period in the summer where we normally open and we have to make that decision if we're going to do it. You'll make that decision. Fair enough. Okay, thanks. Okay, now we have up next from Bloomberg Business Week, Michael Smith. Uh, yes. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. So, uh, Mayor, uh, can you clarify this thing about getting fined if you're not wearing a mask? Does that mean there's an order to wear masks in public outside? Like yes, some there of the is. 
No, there is. Well, the order is, and has been for quite some time, is outside, if you're able to maintain a distance of six feet, uh, you're not, you don't have to wear a mask. But once you get within six feet of somebody, the order is you have to wear a mask. So you have, unless if, if you can't maintain social distancing with six feet outside, then you have to wear a mask. Inside, you have to wear, wear a mask all the time, except when you're eating at a restaurant, obviously. Um, uh, so, yeah, that order has been in effect for quite some time. And any violation of these orders is a second degree misdemeanor. Any of the orders, it's a second degree misdemeanor. Uh, we're converting that now. Today, we're thinking about also making it a civil citation so that other inspectors can then have the, the right to shut down businesses or issue a civil notice, much lower amount, um, like fire inspectors and other building inspectors can issue these notices. So we're considering doing that. And we're probably going to be doing that tonight. So, um, excuse me for interrupting, but so this isn't a change in the order like we've seen in other towns over the past week or so? No, no, there's no, there's no change in the order. The only change will be the uh, will it be a criminal or will it be a civil citation? Um, we're doing the civil citation because when our inspectors find a problem, in order to issue the citation, we have to call a police officer, and uh, and that takes some time and it takes some resources. So, um, in order to give them that tool, we may change that to a civil citation, but that doesn't mean the the, the possibility of a criminal citation goes away. So, anywhere in Miami Dade, if you go outside, you have to wear a mask. If you, anywhere in Miami-Dade. Okay. Now, some cities have something different. Some cities, anytime you're outside, you have to wear a mask. Um, I don't know which cities they are because I haven't seen the orders yet, but anywhere in Miami-Dade for quite some time, okay. if you cannot maintain social distancing while you're outside, you have to wear a mask. And that's been, that's been uh, ongoing for well over a month. Since, since uh, April 9th, sir. What order is, what order is that? 20 April what? 9th. 2020, it was implemented April 9th, um, and it says persons working in or visiting grocery stores, restaurants, pharmacies, construction sites, public transit vehicles, vehicles for hire, and locations where social distancing measures are not possible shall wear facial coverings as defined by the CDC. Well, yes. That's not outside, though, is it? Yes, it is. Yes. Oh, okay. When you cannot maintain social distancing inside or outside, you have to wear a mask. Inside, you have to wear a mask all the time. That's been an order that's been like for over two months. That's, that's okay, been the thank order. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, up next, WLRN's Veronica Zaragoza. Veronica? Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Mayor. Um, actually, I have a question about at what point, now that some hospitals, like you mentioned earlier, Baptist, um, Homestead Baptist is at 0% adult ICU capacity and Jackson North, for instance, has had 4% this morning. At what point would you, um, would patients start going to the field hospital at Miami Beach Convention Center or reopen the other one? I'm just wondering, like, at what point do you determine um, the need for more beds? I, I don't de determine the need for more beds right now. We have, Jen, don't we have over 400 ICU beds available in Miami-Dade County? Yes, we have, um, uh, and more than 2,000 uh, uh, regular med surge beds. And next by next week, by July 1st, we'll have the, a hospital open specifically for um, seniors uh, who may not, be, may not need to be hospitalized but can't return to their um, long-term care facilities. And that will have up to 200 beds as well. So okay. No, we don't. We don't anticipate needing. Um, it's there just in case. I don't anticipate having to go to the uh, surge hospital at, uh, at the convention center anytime soon. And there's plenty of ICU beds um, still available. There may be transfers between hospitals. You know, the Homestead Hospital is a very small hospital, and so they have a limited number of ICU beds. And so, and it, like I said in my opening statement. It's not unusual for IC, for people in ICU and Homestead to be transferred to another Baptist facility because they want to make sure they have ICU beds available. I don't believe that the that right now they're at zero. I think they transferred some folks and they have uh, available ICU beds. Right. Can I, would it be okay to ask just a quick question related to the prior topic on the citations? But I'm just wondering what point you'd make that decision since it is younger people who are um, getting infected at larger rates, 
that you because it's like let's say with the seatbelt enforcement or, or drunk driving enforcement it's like at what point will you determine that this really there needs to be um you know there needs to be more enforcement of people outside not wearing masks i've already made that i already crossed that point i crossed that point last week and you know the uh, the police department understands that so um uh, chief how many how many uh, businesses have you closed and how many citations have you issued um, yes, uh, we've closed about nine businesses and uh, citations are, I would say, four or five since we began. And okay. that's where we've been at so far. And so and so now when we do the civil citations, I expect that there will be more of it. And so beware. If you're outside, you're not practicing social distancing, somebody may tap you on the shoulder and give you a civil citation. Um, and if that's what it takes to get people to pay attention to what they have to do, well, then I guess that's what it takes to get people to pay attention to what they have to do. We're serious about this. We're very serious about this. And, um, and so enforcement has to be key. But look, there are places you can't, you can't uh, it's very difficult to enforce. If you have parents that call, you know, and their kids want to have a pool party with some of their friends and they come on over and have a pool party in a house, it's very difficult and not impossible for us to enforce that. So we're asking people to, to practice common sense. Don't do that. Right now, we have a problem with young people that are catching this virus, and probably because they're being young people, and they're doing the things that young people do, right? And so uh, it's not the time to let down our guard. It's a time to put up our guard. And if we do this and sacrifice ourselves for a little, bu a little bit longer, then we can get you know through this. And so... Um, it's not just about enforcement. It's about us taking personal responsibility to keep ourselves safe. Young people, old people, everybody. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, we're going to be enforcing it as much as we can to drive the, home the message that we're serious. We have an issue and we want to take care of it now before, uh, you know, it grows any, any bigger. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, I have a question now from the reporter from the Haitian Times. He's emailed them to me. He is asking, is the county tracking the availability of PPE? That's his first question. And then asking if the availability of PPE factors into the severity of the penalty for not wearing a mask. No, the, the availability of PPE does not. Uh, you Everybody should have a mask. Uh, everybody, you can make masks out of cloth. It's, uh, you know, three layers of cloth over your mouth and your nose. That's, uh, that qualifies as a mask. It's not, it's not something that you need to go out and buy. You can actually make them. But we do have supply of masks that we want to start to distribute to those folks that may not have a mask, okay, or, or their mask is kind of, you know, shoddy. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, Deputy Mayor Kemp, uh, what's our supply of PPE? I think that we had a shortage uh, early on in the pandemic, but as more and more producers and the supply has gotten better and better, so I don't anticipate he's going to tell you that we have a shortage of PPE. So, uh, Deputy Mayor, where are we with PPEs? You're correct, Mr. Mayor. We do not have a shortage of PPE. All of our departments have all that they need, and in addition to that, we have a supply that uh, per your direction, we're prepared to distribute to the hotspots for folks who may need PPE as a part of the surge. Okay. All right. And one more question from him. He said, you mentioned that the county reopening is on pause. What needs to be met for a business to be allowed to open? Well, there are plenty of businesses that are allowed to open. There are certain things that are not allowed to open. I am not anticipating that we're going to move further into openings until we see a reduction, a significant reduction in the positive rate of tests. And also we see a, a again, a reduction in the hospitalizations and people in the hospital. So no, I'm not, we're not, we're not opening up bars. We're not opening up nightclubs. That's just asking for trouble. And, uh, and so we're not going to do that. And so the things that are open, if they follow the rules, it is safe to be open. Bars and uh, nightclubs, I just don't see how you can, you can operate with, you know, uh, it's, it's not about keeping apart, okay? That's not, that's not what a bar or a nightclub is all about. So, uh, no, that's, uh, those things are, are probably going to stay closed. No, they will stay closed until we see improvement. 
Okay, up next, Fox Sports Radio, Andy Slater. What happened to Andy? I thought he was always. I, I, had, to, I had to push him way down since I, I got timeouts. Go first. You pushed him all the way back to the back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> My question is for any of the doctors here today. Uh, I had the mayor of Fort Lauderdale on my show just a few days ago. And he said that health experts told him the virus has mutated 18 times. Have you seen any, I, I see you laughing, um, but have you seen any evidence that the virus is weaker at all in Miami-Dade? No, the short answer is no. First of all, 18 mutations, nonsense. There's more than 10,000 mutations. They're just not important. They, you know, the, this is an RNA virus. And even though, unlike many other RNA viruses, it does have a little bit of proofreading capability. Nonetheless, this is a, this, the, most of the mutations that happen do not matter. And in fact, the only clad, the only set of mutations that seems to have any change in the picture is to make it a little bit more contagious and a little bit harder for our immune systems to make good antibodies which is not good news. Uh, I think what, what people are talking about is they're reflecting that we're doing a better job in hospitals as physicians, nurses, and, and staff in caring for patients so we're not seeing the, the case fatality rate as bad, in part because we have enough supplies right now. But this is a situation that, and I just want to be very clear on this, if everybody does everything as beautifully as the mayor has outlined and follows his plan. At first, we're still going to see more cases for the next few days. That's not a failure. That's a nature of how the, the virus communicates between people. But it will it will end, and it will and then we'll go, be able to go back down. If we don't adhere to what the mayor is saying, then we'll again we'll see cases rising, but steeper and longer and things will get worse and they may get to that point where we run out of all kinds of supplies. You, someone asked about PPE, but the truth is there's a lot of other supplies. In fact, today, uh, Dr. Tedros was addressing an, uh, an international problem with oxygen supply, which is a vital thing for some of the individuals that we have to hospitalize with this thing. So remdesivir, oxygen, other meds, other, other equipment becomes more and more of an issue if we have too many per time. And that's really serious. So we really have to follow the mayor's uh, direction here. Okay, and I do have a question for uh, you, Mr. Mayor. As you know, baseball is now officially coming back in about uh, one month. If the Marlins do send in a plan uh, that they wanna have a certain amount of fans in the stands, is that something that you will allow? It's something I'll consider. So I got to see the plan, and then I got to get with my doctors and see what they what they think about it. Okay. Has your stance changed on that at all? Because for NASCAR and Homestead, there were a thousand pe up to a thousand people allowed. So has has it changed? Yeah, I did. Well, number one, uh, NASCAR is outside. NASCAR also has, uh, you know, Homestead has what, a, a capacity of what, what, 60, 80,000. And so you had a thousand people in there. They were way spread apart. That's probably not an issue. Um, Marlins Park, uh, if you had fans in there, um, again, it, uh, it's something that I'll consider and then I'll run the plan by our doctors and then see if they think that that's safe enough. And then it has, the enforcement of it, it's the key to everything, the enforcement of everything. And so can you practice social distancing? Can you keep away from each other? What's your what's your plan? Obviously, you can put the roof open, not have it closed. So it's like an outdoor, you know, uh, arena or, or area. Uh, I'll consider it, but I'm not I'm not saying yes. I'm not saying no. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I see a couple of folks from NBC6. I think Kim Wynn is around. Kim, did you have a question for Mayor yes. Jimenez or any of the other experts? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my question is for Mayor Jimenez. Um, I just want to get, you know, as much detail as we can on the surge teams. Like, when will they be out? When will people start to see them? What will this look like? Well, I certainly want to put them out as soon as possible. Jen Jennifer uh, can give you greater detail of when they are going to be going out. 
I believe that Alex Munoz, who's our director of uh, animal services, is going to be leading it, right, Jen? Yes, sir. We're hoping okay. to be able to get them into the neighborhoods, hopefully this weekend. Okay, not, and just what, not sure. what will it look like? I know you said 100 people. Would it be like teams of, you know, five or six? Like how many uh, specific teams will be in, in different neighborhoods? We're, we're going to work that all out. I think it depends on the neighborhood, the um, wh where exactly we're going. Is it a residential neighborhood? Um, is it, are there a lot of multifamily, um, you know, buildings? Is it uh, primarily a business area? Um, it'll be different depending on um, the hot spot that we want to address. Okay. And this, my last question, this might go back to Mayor Jimenez, um, just as far as putting folks in hotels to, um, to isolate themselves if they don't have other places to go. Can you just touch on that again? Yeah, we'll be working with the hospitals and also the De Florida Department of Health who will be referring those individuals. I'm sorry, the hospitals were referring it to the Florida Department of Health. They'll go through a certain uh, criteria and then at the end, they will advise us that they have somebody who meets the criteria that needs a uh, hotel room and then we will handle we will handle the hotel room and right now you know i think we have about 100 rooms it's a limited number but we're going to be looking for more rooms uh and uh because again we don't want we don't want uh, those folks to go back to a place where they're going to be contaminating uh, a large group of people in a small space and, it's, and if you if you do that then you're almost guaranteeing that everybody in that household is going to be contaminated we'll, we'll get the we'll be We'll have COVID nineteen, and that's the last thing we want to do. That's one of the one of the strategies we have to try to reduce the uh, the incidents. And not everybody's the same, you know. Some people have plenty of space to self isolate in their own home. They don't have too many people, and some people don't. And so it's all on a case by case basis. Okay. Anybody else have a question in English before we move on to Spanish? Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, hey, Patty. It's, hey. Hey, Danny Cohen from Channel Seven News. How are you? I have a question for Mayor Jimenez. Mayor, um, just following up on what Channel 10 uh, asked earlier and Bloomberg, just to um, maybe simplify it for folks, has the county considered something, and I know you said that, um, you know, a mask order, if you can't social distance, has been in place for a long time, but obviously you see the city of Miami, Palm Beach County in recent days, as you've seen the spike, put a blanket mask order in place. Outside of private residences or, or anything like that, has the county considered an actual blanket mask order, a new one, um, to kind of simplify it for folks similar to what you've seen in some cities? We considered it. I considered it yesterday. And um, and uh, we think that the order that we have today, uh, if in force, is what's needed. Would anything change that? What what goes into the thinking there? Would anything change that? If you, if you just follow the orders today, that's what's needed to keep the contagion down. The other thing is just simplifying it, I guess. Uh, so, but does it really make sense for somebody who's walking their dog outside their home with nobody around to wear a mask? Um, it's common sense. So, we understand, you know, we understand the the, the issue, but then you're you're also, you know, there's a big amount of inconvenience to folks that they they look at you and they say, "Why am I wearing a mask? There's nobody here." Uh, so, you know, you worry about. I'm sorry, do you worry about their confusion between the city of Miami and Miami-Dade County and some of the, you know, some of the unincorporated? Is that uh, uh, Miami-Dade County is not the source of that confusion, <laughs> okay? So go talk to the, uh, the folks that caused the confusion, all right? There was a mask order in this town and has been for two months, all right? Uh, and so, you know, people are asking me, well, are you worried about the confusion? I never caused the confusion. I'm not, I'm not the source of the confusion, all right? I, I, I am the, I'm the source of trying to be as uh, consistent as possible. The vast majority or the majority of cities in this town are following the county rules. There are cities that want to do their own thing. They're the ones that are causing the confusion. Go talk to their leaders. Any in any cities in particular you're talking about? The ones that are putting up this, uh, the, the rule. Look, it may be that in, in those cities and in certain areas of those cities where you have a whole bunch of people that are walking, uh, like the Brickle area, downtown area, maybe in Miami Beach, okay, on on Collins, et cetera, where you have a whole ton of people that are walking, that it makes sense to have a, a mask rule because you'll be doing this the whole time, okay? Just keep it on, all right? Because you're gonna be walking by people all the time. But the unincorporated areas of Miami-Dade County are not like that. 
you know, we don't have those kind of spaces. Uh, and so and we have a lot more single family homes than they do in the city of Miami and Miami Beach. And so it may make sense. And so I would think that even in the cities, they could be there could be spots where they have this the rule because there's so many people and it's so congested and it's easier. Um, but for Miami Dade, we have you know we have a lot more space and a lot more single family homes and a lot more neighborhoods where people don't get close to each other, not like they do in, in the more dense areas of of Miami and Miami Beach. Switching gears a little bit, Mayor. Last week you spoke about um, the county going to start cracking down on vacation properties that were turning weekly rentals into party homes. Um, has any enforcement started on that? Can you tell us any more, expand on any since you spoke about it last week? It started, you know, last week. And we, uh, we also asked uh, the neighbors that hear these parties to, uh, going on, please let us know. You know, I, I saw a piece from Bellmead Island and I don't understand why. Um, as a matter of fact, the individual on the piece used to be my, my assistant. Okay. Rita. All right. That lady was my assistant, right? So I know her really well. And, and uh, she's been calling the police uh, in the city for, you know, for uh, over and over again. And the parties continue. Those parties are legal, right? And so, you know, that, that house should have been shut down a long time ago. If we have the same information in Miami-Dade or in cities, we need to shut those, those, uh, those party houses down. I'm not sure if we have. I don't know. I'm not sure if we've gone to them. So I'll let the, uh, the, the, the chief answer that question. Yeah. And, that, and just before the chief answers, I mean, that was, that was on our station. We did the story within the city of Miami um, at the, you know, the Bell Louise health with Rita, but yes, I am yeah, curious. You know, Rita, Rita, Rita worked for me for like 20 years. Okay. All right. Um, but yeah, I'm curious if, if, if you guys have been able to, you know, either through code or police identify any of these so-called pandemic party homes, if you will. Okay. Well, the chief, can you answer that question? Um, yes, we've gone out. We've had a couple calls on uh, houses like that, uh, some in the Northeast state and, and that house in particular, which is the city of Miami. We are working for a long term resolution with the uh, city of Miami and the code enforcement to be able to make a long term effect of that. But, yes, we are doing enforcement at those locations. And you're not talking. Are you talking to you specifically specifically about that home in Miami or a couple of other locations in Dade? We've had in other locations in, in Dade that we had uh, a similar situation, but we have uh, done enforcement to that uh, locations at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And I can also add that we actually put uh, the reporter from WSBN in touch with the police department. I, I don't know if it was yesterday because I know uh, Channel 7 was getting uh, calls after the story aired about other people doing the same thing. And so they were giving him the addresses and we put him in touch with Miami-Dade police so that he could give Miami-Dade police the addresses to go check out uh, whatever happens on the weekend. Okay, uh, I think we can move on to Spanish now, Mayor. Thank you. Buenas tardes. Ya han visto el condado Miami-Dade está eh, viendo un aumento en las pruebas positivas de COVID-19 junto con más personas en los hospitales. El aumento más alarmante es entre las personas de 18 a 34 años de edad. Entre el 18 de mayo hasta el 13 de junio, los casos positivos en ese grupo se han multiplicado por 5, de 200 a 1,000 casos. Aunque este grupo es de menos riesgo, estos jóvenes están en alto riesgo si tienen sobrepeso o si tienen condiciones como la diabetes. En los últimos días, el hospital Jackson está viendo que un tercio de los pacientes con el virus son jóvenes entre 18 y 34 años. La mitad de este grupo están sobrepeso. Nuestra meta siempre ha sido proteger a los que están en mayor riesgo a nuestros residentes mayores de 60 años. Si un joven tiene COVID-19 y si no lo sabe, se lo puede pegar a sus padres o sus abuelos. No queremos que los hospitales se llenen. Por eso es importante que las personas mayores sigan las órdenes de estar más seguro en casa. Tenemos que proteger a los trabajadores de salud que tantos sacrificios han hecho durante esta pandemia. En muchos casos uh, están uh, viviendo separados de sus seres queridos uh, para no pegarle el, el virus. Debemos ser responsables con uh, nuestras acciones. Se lo debemos a ellos. Les pido a los padres y abuelos que tengan mucho cuidado y no se acerquen a sus hijos y nietos. No existe una orden oficial para esto, pero tiene, tiene sentido común. 
esto es una cuestión de vida o muerte para muchos. Otra cosa que hemos notado son zonas de contagio en Miami-Dade. En estas partes estamos viviendo el contagio, viviendo el contagio más agresivo. Las zonas alrededor del aeropuerto de la pequeña Habana y el, a, a la pata están incluidas. Además, el sur del condado por Cutler Bay y Homestead. Por eso estamos empleando equipos de acción conocidos como Surge para visitar estos barrios y hablar con los residentes. Les recordarán la, la importancia de usar máscaras adentro de los negocios y en lugares al aire libre donde la distancia de menos de seis pies no es posible entre las personas. Un equipo de 100 personas estarán tocando de, de casa en casa para educar al público y también repartirán uh, máscaras y antisépticos uh, para las manos. Me reuní con uh, nuestros expertos médicos y con el Departamento de Salud para hablar sobre cómo enfrentar el contagio. Muchos de estos doctores están aquí conmigo hoy. Sabemos que en la zona de Homestead hay trabajadores en, la, en las fincas que han dado positivo y muchos viven en casas muy pequeñas con muchas personas adentro. Para estas personas es muy difícil separarse si dan positivo, así que vamos a ayudarlos para frenar el contagio. El Departamento de Salud lo va a alertar sobre los residentes necesitados uh, que dan positivo para el COVID-19. Si no están a lo suficiente enfermos como para ir al hospital, el condado tend tendrá un número limitado de cuartos de hotel donde se, se podrán quedar hasta que den negativo para el COVID-19. El proceso será confidencial y solo el Departamento de Salud sabe quiénes son las personas que califican. Antes de terminar, quiero que hablar un poco sobre el aumento de pacientes en los hospitales. Todavía nos sobran camas, camas de hospitales y camas de cuidados intensivos. Existen hospitales que han transferido a sus pacientes a otros hospitales que tienen en su cadena. Esto es algo común. El número de pacientes de COVID-19 en nuestros hospitales sigue siendo mucho más debajo de lo que vimos al comienzo de esta pandemia. Además, tenemos un hospital temporal montado en el Centro de Convenciones de Miami Beach, disp disponible, que no estamos usando. El antiguo Pan American Hospital abrirá uh, sus puertas para acomodar a los pacientes de los nursing homes que necesitan ser aislados, pero no necesitan cuidado intensivo. Ahora le quiero pedir un, un favor a todos los que hayan recuperado el COVID-19. Por favor, donen su plasma. Su plasma o sea, le puede salvar la vida a los pacientes. Visite la página oneblood.org para donar. Y ahora tomaré las preguntas uh, en, en español. Gracias. Y Patty. Ok, I'm back. Uh, la primera pregunta, Rainé Anciani, Noticias 23. Sí, buenas tardes, eh, alcalde. Quería consultarles sobre, bueno, ya sabemos que hay un aumento eh, pues, sustancial en los casos. Eh, sabemos que hay estas eh, zonas de mayor contagio. Uno, si nos podría elaborar un poco más sobre eh, Homestead, que sabemos pues que estos trabajadores de la granja se han visto afectados. Y dos, en el caso de las multas o de estas situaciones de carácter civil y de carácter eh, criminal. Si nos puede hacer esa explicación que la hizo en inglés de la diferenciación que se está haciendo ahorita por el law informe. Bueno, ahora, ahora eh, si comete un, un delito o no cumple con la, las regulaciones de las órdenes de emergencia, es es un misdemeanor de segundo grado. Eso es una violación criminal. Lo que estamos hace, haciendo, estamos mirando si podemos establecer una, una violación cívica, civil, que quiere decir que entonces eh, un, uh, un inspector de la, del departamento de bomberos, otros inspectores que tenemos en el condado de Miami-Dade, te puede iniciar esa violación, hacer mucho menos de los 500 dólares que, que, que es uh, la violación del misdemeanor criminal. Y también no tiene un tiempo en la cárcel. Así que vamos a ver si eso es posible. Si es posible, vamos a iniciarla para que entonces muchas más personas adentro del condado de Miami-Dade puedan iniciar estas multas si están violando las, las regulaciones del condado de Miami-Dade. ¿Es todo, René? En el caso de también, eh, si nos puede ampliar un poco sobre estos grupos de acción que van a estar trabajando en las áreas de más alto contagio, como es el caso de Homestead. Bueno, se llaman equipos de surge, van a ser por lo menos 100 personas que van en estos uh, zip codes. Hay zonas donde el virus está mucho más caliente, 
eh, la, los incidencia de positivos mu mucho más alta que ot otras partes del condado de Miami-Dade. Esas personas van a tocar casa en casa para, para dar información y también si necesitan tipo de equipo como máscaras o antiséptico, también le puede distribuir, este, can distribute estos, estos tipos de necesidades, estos tipos de, de equipos para, 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 para reducir el, el incidente de contagio en esas áreas. También la información va a ser para las personas que están adentro de esas casas, los negocios también, a informar a, lo, a, lo, a las personas que, que tengan cuidado, especialmente a las personas de tercera edad, que tengan cuidado si viven con personas que salen a la calle, jóvenes que están saliendo a la calle, que, que se alejen en lo más posible adentro de su hogar para que puedan este, bajar el incidente de contagio uh, a ellos también. Alcalde, una última rápida pregunta. En el caso de que este, este, pues, esta tendencia de que incremento en los contagios continúe como va hasta ahora, ¿hay alguna otra medida, hay alguna otra consideración que el condado esté pues, evaluando para hacer frente pues, el pico de esta epidemia? Estamos evaluando, evaluando todo. También estoy en contacto con los doctores, muchos de ellos de que están aquí en qué manera podemos eh, empezar a, a reducir la incidencia de, de contagio aquí en el condado de Miami-Dade, en, en qué tenemos, qué otras medidas tenemos que hacer. Así que todo está en la mesa. No, yo, no, yo no pienso, no deseo regresar a, este, a lo que es uh, el, uh, el anaranjado, orange, que era la, la fase que, que terminamos hace como uh, tres semanas, un mes, que estamos ahora en la fase amarilla. Pero también este, todas las opciones están en la mesa, así que no puedo, no puedo decir que no, no vamos a regresar, no deseo regresar, yo creo que eso va a ser muy difícil y va a ser, eh, va, va a ser un paso muy eh, peligroso también para la economía, pero la, la salud es la primera consideración que tenemos que tomar. Alcalde, tengo una pregunta de eh, TVB Network, Emanuel Villalobos, que está en la llamada, pero tiene problemas con el audio, me mandó la pregunta. En relación al debate presidencial que eh, tendrá lugar en Miami en el mes de octubre, ¿es aún distante la fecha y quizás impredecible en qué punto de la pandemia estemos? ¿Tiene el condado en cuenta los escenarios que se pueden presentar y en caso de que los números no estén estables, ¿Se podría cancelar o hacer sin público el debate presidencial? No creo que se va a cancelar. Lo que tenemos que hacer es asegurar que en la manera que se eh, conduce a no, en el, conduct, el, el debate okay. eh, tiene, tiene que ser seguro. Uh, así que el, el Adrian R. Center es un centro bastante grande. Puede ser que hay un, un límite de las personas que pueden entrar a ver este y, y participar. En el, en el debate, así que uh, puede ser que no va a ser lo normal, no espero que va a ser lo normal, no espero que, que vamos a tener 2.000 personas adentro de ese centro, va a ser eh, una audiencia muy limitada, tiene que estar seguro, todo esto tiene que, que tenemos que hablar con los doctores uh, que, que aquí me avisan, en qué manera se puede hacer, pero no creo que se tiene que cancelar, se puede hacer de una manera que, que es segura. Gracias, alcalde. Ahora pasamos con Yusnavi Pérez de Telemundo 51. Hola, muy buenas tardes. Mi pregunta es uh, sobre eh, con el coronavirus. Eh, uno de los retos es que los hospitales no se saturen, pero ¿cuándo se le recomienda a alguien que tiene síntomas que vaya a un hospital? Tiene, tiene primero que vaya, si tiene síntomas y no se siente bien, entonces tiene, debe de ir a, a, a ver su médico y el médico entonces le va a avisar qué tiene que hacer, regresar a la casa o ir a un hospital, todo depende a la persona, pero hay, hay doctores aquí que pueden contestar eso mucho mejor que yo, así que por favor, una de las doctoras, por favor. Bueno, por supuesto, eh, uno tiene que tener en cuenta, número uno, si crees que tiene COVID, la persona debe llamar a su médico primero y tener una conversación con el médico y el médico va a avisarle precisamente lo que necesita hacer dependiendo en los síntomas que está manifestando. Por supuesto, si es una persona eh, 
mayor o con muchos problemas médicos, muchas de estas condiciones que lo hacen más susceptible, nosotros los médicos somos sensitivos a ese problema y más pronto lo vamos a, a pedir que, ve, que entren a, al hospital a ver. Por supuesto, las, las cosas más, obviamente, cosas como falta de aire, eh, unos dolores muy graves, etcétera, eso son los tipos de, de cosas que son alarmantes y, y están llevando los, los pacientes al hospital. Pero eh, deben saber, de todos modos, que tenemos muchos problemas. Hoy mismo eh, eh, me están llamando porque están subiendo los casos en los, en los UCI. Y es una cosa que de verdad tenemos que prestarle mucha atención y, y cuidarse las cosas que ha, di, ha, ha, ha dicho el alcalde. Es sumamente importante. Gracias. ¿Cómo? Si alguna de las otras doctoras querían opinar también. Se acaban de ir las dos por el mismo ratón que te digo. Están aumentando los casos y está muy grave la situación. Muchas gracias, doctora. Ok, y nos falta solo un reportero en español de Estrella TV, Ronald Hacha. Adelante. Alcalde, una pregunta. Eh, hoy día amanecimos justamente con el condado de Brower, que dice que son 506 casos. Y de una u otra manera, el alcalde ha señalado que va a haber la, la penalidad de 500 dólares por día, que está 24 horas para mejorar el error. Pero la segunda penalidad es de 15 mil dólares. El condado de Miami-Dade está viendo la posibilidad de que sea aún más fuerte las penalidades para estos eh, restaurantes o lugares que han roto las reglas de las restricciones. Eh, todo, la, la medida es, eso es legal. Uh, la primera cosa es una multa de 500 eh, pesos, pero también puedes ser arrestado, puedes ir a la cárcel. Así que eso yo creo que es una, es una multa bastante alta. Um, eso todo tiene que ver con, con el, el misdemeanor, es un second degree misdemeanor. Así que es algo que tengo que hablar con mis abogados. O sea, no pensaría de repente en 15 mil dólares, una, una, una multa que le duela al negocio para que no piense de una otra vez eh, romper con esas restricciones. Yo creo que la, la segunda cosa debe ser que no pueden abrir. Si, si siguen, siguen no cumpliendo con las regulaciones, nosotros le podemos negar que puedan abrir otra vez. Eso lo va a doler mucho más que otra, otra multa. Si, si, si siguen y siguen y siguen, eh, parece que ustedes no entienden, así que no pueden abrir. Tenemos, nosotros también tenemos las posibilidades de cerrar ese negocio y negarle eh, que puedan abrir en el futuro, o por lo menos durante esta pandemia. Gracias. Ok, Mayor, that will do it. I think we don't have any more questions, so that will wrap it up for us this afternoon. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marty. All right. And uh, let you get back to work. And so thank you. Thank you all. You all have a good one. God bless.